All right, everybody. I am finally done with Jurassic Park. Uh, I don't know why, but it took 30 years to finally read it for some reason. I never read it as a kid or when I was a teenager or whatever in the 90s. I don't know why, but in any case, it was worth the wait. Um, I kind of have a little bit of a checklist. Now, this is kind of like a... It's a book review, but it's kind of to the point of what I liked. I'm not going to get into... I mean, the book's 30 years old. You've probably read it. We've all seen the movie. Um, so, I figured I'd go down by the characters. Because the book is very different. Well, I'll save that. Well, it's not very different, but it, it's, it's different from the uh, movie. So, starting off with Dr. Grant. Now, comparing it to the movie and the film... Dr. Grant was my favorite in the film, and I think in the book, he's not quite my favorite. Close. It's close. It's very close. Dr. Sattler, I think she did more in the movie, personally, which is fine. I like that. Uh, but I like her in the book as well. I liked her. Um, it's an interesting dynamic. It's a, it's a little different. Um... But yeah, it, they gave her more to do, I thought, in the film than the book. Although she did stuff in the book, too. But I, I think she did more in the film, in my opinion. Uh, Dr. Malcolm was my favorite in the book. Uh, as I said last night, because things he said sounded like me, philosophically. Uh, when he's talking about science and, and man's folly and thinking it can control nature and such uh and it's funny because i loved him in the film as well and i would say because jeff goldblum really brought malcolm to life and it's funny i didn't see the interesting thing with this film well this book in the film is i didn't and i think i said this earlier I didn't see Dr. Grant as Dr. Grant in the film. I saw him differently. Same with uh, Ian and Dr. Sattler and stuff. Which I thought was weird. I thought I would have got it kind of... Like I would get the, the movie. Because the movie, the, they're so iconic, right? Like the, the characters and, the, and whatnot. So you would think I would get that mixed up and jumbled up. It's like when I read a Star Wars novel or listen to the audiobook... I automatically think Mark Hamill. Uh, same thing with Princess Leia, Carrie Fisher, Han Solo, Harrison Ford. You know, that, like that. That's what you think. You can't separate them. With this, I could, and I'm surprised because the movie was such a cultural phenomena, phenomenon, phenomenon, phenomena, phenomenon, something like that. Back in the '90s, you would think that would happen, but apparently not. So in the next one we got is Lex. Lex was kind of annoying in this, and I understand it was written as she was like a preteen kid. Um, she was better in the movie. I'll, I'll say that. Same with Tim. Tim was uh, the same way. Um, almost the same, though. I, I just think his, it was more enjoyable, the character, in the film. I think it worked a little bit better, I think. Um, now, Hammond... I liked him in the movie. He was a complex guy. I wouldn't say redeemable guy, but you could kind of... You liked him more. Like, he was likable, and he was kind of maybe stabbing you in the back, but you felt good about it, I guess. Um, with the one that we get in the book, he's just a flat-out an asshole, I think. Uh, especially when it comes to the kids and, and how that happens, where they scare him, and he ends up twisted and busting his ankle and dying by the di dinosaurs. Uh, spoiler alert, he dies in the book. Um, which I didn't like, to be honest. I, I didn't... I felt like I, I was a little surprised because I didn't read about the book or anything. I just kind of went through it like it was the first was the first time I was reading it and I didn't want to go on Google, find out what happens. And I'm glad I didn't do that. Um, and he died and I didn't like that for some reason. We'll see when I pick up Lost World how that all plays out or whatever. Uh, Dr. Wu, I, I liked him in the movie. The book, it was kind of interesting because he was kind of like very regimented, regimented science first, kind of 
I don't really care. And then it seemed like he was kind of getting in that redemption mode of things, but not quite there. Almost like Hammond. Hammond was more, I would say, not as uh, like aware of his mistake. Whereas Wu kind of put the pieces together and, and was seeing, yeah, this isn't exactly right. Um, and he was slowly stripping that arrogance before he died. I didn't like that he died in the book either. Um, but anyway, we'll move on. Mr. Arnold, I got a tie for that. I thought um, about the same as it is in the book and in the movie. Maybe the movie will slightly more because it's Samuel L. Jackson. Um, so I'll leave it at that. Uh, Nedry, I went with the movie. I, I Again, I think it was, it was Wayne Knight, I think is his name. Uh, I think his performance was really good and kind of sold it. Whereas, and here you kind of get lost a little bit with with it i think for, well at least i did i don't know if you would but uh and then Gennaro, uh i, I like the book character much better than the blood-sucking lawyer that we get in in jurassic park and that's and i understand why they did that um in the movie where he wouldn't be sympathetic because to me he was kind of sympathetic throughout the book he was concerned yes he took responsibility of the blame unlike hammond uh, so it was kind of the opposite effect. So I, I did like him. Um, Maldoon, I, that was a tie. Again, kind of the same in the film and the book, kind of the same essence, so to speak. So it wasn't really like they gave more or less to him. Um, well, there was more in this. I, I think maybe I would say in the book he was a much better character because he did more, so to speak. And uh, Dr. Harden, obviously the book because... In the in the film, he's just there for the Triceratops, and that's it. You don't see what happens to him after, which is pretty interesting because I would have liked to have seen what happened. But, um, yeah, I mean, you know. Now, as far as the plot goes, well, I'll say this. The differences between the two, it's funny because as I was reading it, I'm like, oh, I can see why this was a movie. And then I did a little research... Uh, today, and I'm like, oh, so Michael was writing this uh, as a, uh, the author, was writing this as a, a, a script, which turned into a book, and then it turned into a script again for the movie, so I can see why it happened, and I understand why Spielberg did the things he did in the film versus um, the book, and I think it was the right choice, really, at the end of the day, it worked very well. That's the one thing about Spielberg. He tells a good... I don't think he's as good as the director as everybody says. Personally, I think George Lucas is a better storyteller and director. But but Stephen visually tells pretty well in how he edits and tells the story and pieces in his pacing with the story. Um, I think visually George tells a better story because George doesn't need words to convey a, 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 a feeling or a message or... Whatever, he gets the music going, the lighting, the shot, and he tells it brilliantly. Um, Spielberg's more flash with that, I think. Um, but he does edit very well, and he does piece together a story. Like, he he pulls a good story out of this and puts it on the film very well, I think. Uh, granted, he's got other people doing the screenplay or whatever, I think. I can't remember if he helped out with the screenplay. I don't know if he did, but... He certainly got the arrangement done pretty well in the pacing, I think. So, although there are flaws in that film, but there's flaws in Star Wars as well, as much as I love George. Um, just simple little things. The one thing that always didn't work well was the Tyrannosaurus Rex attacking the Explorer, the Ford Explorer there, where he comes out of the cage, and then there's a pit, but there wasn't a pit when he came out of the cage. That whole thing just never worked well. It works well in the book when that happens, uh, so to speak, when the T-Rex gets out um, and the car gets thrown and everything and there's a ditch and stuff. It, it, it's explained a lot better in the book, I think. Um, but you can do that in a book. You can kind of give the details a lot better. And there goes an airplane. 
uh, where a movie you can't you can't always explain everything or kind of you can suggest things and maybe let people which I do love I love when they kind of give you a hint at something don't even explain something maybe just mention a name and go from there and you kind of just put the pieces you know that was a lot of what they did back back in the day I would say in the 90s that started to go away where they kind of like you know they hinted things but they never gave you the answer to it and you had to figure it out for yourself that doesn't really happen anymore uh, I don't know why. Usually it gets resolved the next film or something like that or, you know. But anyway, uh, I did watch the movie last night as part of the, you know, I finished last night. I read, finished this up and I'm like, before I go to bed, I'm like, you know what? I finished early. I'll watch the film. I turn on Netflix. It's there. I watched it. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Fun adventure type story. It's a classic. You can t see why. Um, the effects, I think, hold up for the most part, uh, for the most part, I think so, but, uh, in any case, uh, now, uh, let's get back to the book here, let me see, let me look at my, uh, I think in the end, you gotta look at it this way, first off, the movie was cast perfect, and I think that, that is why I can't be so harsh on the, the film, because I enjoyed the film, I liked the film, it has flaws, uh, directing wise and like little mistakes here and there but the casting if the casting hadn't been so perfect I'd probably say the book more I to me the two separate things like the book is what it's based off of and I think the film paid a good homage to to the book I think they they did pretty well like it and that's pretty rare because usually they deviate quite a bit from the the novel here I think they paid tribute very well and they told the story visually the best way they could at the time the book however gives you more details more more backstory and all that other stuff so and, and even more emotion maybe with the characters so i would say after 30 years i would go more with the book to be honest however they're two separate things to be honest again the casting i think sells that like we you know that whole cast, Doctor Grant, you, Sam Neill is is that, and you, you, all of them. You, you couldn't even picture anyone else playing those characters. That's how well it is, um, and it was done well. The book just lets your imagination run wild. It's a fast-paced book. I read it pretty quickly. It's four hundred and something page, at least the paperback one here. What is it? Four 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 forty-eight. And it took me about a week. Um, and I was going fairly slow. I mean, this, I read quite a bit every night. I was like, all right, I gotta, I gotta keep going because it's, it's a fun ride. It was exciting and I enjoyed that. Uh, it was definitely worth the wait for 30 years. Um, let me see what else I got in my notes because I didn't want to make this a, a too big of a, a thing here. Yeah, basically I said everything that I needed to say. Um... So I highly recommend, if you've never read it, read it. If you have read it and it's been a while, I say pick it up again. It was fun. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. I thought I was going to read it. It'd be similar to the movie. I thought going in, and you shouldn't, you shouldn't uh, prejudge. This is why I'm, I'm glad I committed to it. I'm like, you know what? I've never read it. I'm going to read it. I have some preconceived notions going in because of the movie, and it pollutes your head and what you think is going into it. But it didn't happen to me. Which I found it was strange that when I'm reading it, Dr. Grant was a completely different character visually in my mind than in the film. And I wanted it that way. I really didn't want to cross the streams there, so to speak. And it's funny how that happened. I thought going in that that was going to happen. I was going to picture that. Like even Hammond, I didn't picture him in the same way. Uh, Dr. Ian... Uh, Malcolm, I didn't picture Dr. Sattler. No, it was completely different. Like I had different ideas of, I mean, similar uh, in appearance and, and kind of look, but but completely different. Like Sattler was younger in my mind, um, and Dr. Grant was probably my age, maybe a little bit more. Uh, same with Ian and stuff. So it, it was just different. It was a completely different thing, and it, and it was great to read, fun, even the science behind it was interesting. Uh, so yeah, definitely, definitely worth reading it. And one of the reasons why I picked this up, 
Uh, as you guys know, I've been, I got all these other, you know, I guess you'd say philosophical stuff, and I even got a business book I got to get into. Uh, this here, they say it's pretty good. Um, so we'll see, we'll see. Maybe that'll motivate me to do something. Uh, so the, yes, and then I got this. Uh, as I got, I told you guys, and this is how much I, I enjoyed the book and even like the movie. You get there are a lot of philosophical questions asking and morale type stuff, especially at the end with with Ian talking about uh, you know climate change and how man thinks they can stop it and this and and all these things. And it brought up a lot of interesting things. So like I said last night, I looked to see if this was available, like the 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 philosophy side because I love these pop culture books because I think they're just fun because um, I like that and I was like oh I gotta get it because I read this watched the movie and then there's you know all this stuff that you're thinking so hopefully this is good I'll be diving into this after I read The Lost World which I might I'm gonna be honest I might order it after I'm done with this video and start on it again but back to my point here I started to uh, as I got all these philosophy books because I'm on my sabbatical I'm doing the summer reading and I'm, I'm going to be reading quite a bit uh, as my time off from podcasting and stuff uh, and doing a lot of thinking and stuff it's fun to mix it up with with a fiction book that's fun and that's part of the reason why I get Sherlock Holmes which I'll be hitting probably September because that seems perfect time for it September October November maybe even in December I'll read a few stories there I'm looking forward to that. So, but I'm probably going to pick up the Lost World this week. Uh, I, oh, I'm almost done with uh, uh, what is it? Why We Drive, which is an interesting and compelling audio book that I'm listening to. I don't have the physical book, but uh, it got it got a little political again, but it also a bit of a philosophical sense, like uh, like po politics in the f philosophical sense. I'll leave it at that. It's not. And it's told, and I have to assume that the author is like a libertarian, almost like me. I kind of lean that way in case you're wondering what my politics are, which you really shouldn't. It doesn't really matter to me. Um, but that's kind of where I am, and he kind of tells it objectively, I think. Uh, and it's an interesting thing. So all these books have been pretty interesting, been fun. I actually just started on uh, As a Man Thinketh, which was interesting, um, by James Allen there with the, the th way he put that the, you know it's only one the first thing that'll be done probably tomorrow or you know sometime this week I'll be doing that because I want to take a little bit of time I mean it's a very small it's like 42 pages or something like that it's a very light book but I want to uh read something like I'll read a thing think on it take some notes which I'm probably going to do after this after I order my the, the lost world for this so part of the reason you've got to get I think if you're in the mode what I am with the reading here with the whole, you know, philosophical psychology, whatever uh, you're diving into, it's fun to get, I think, the fictional side of things to kind of deviate from that seriousness. Uh, and then if you're reading something like this or even Sherlock Holmes, you might get a philosophical idea as you're reading it or, or just a perspective that you like, oh, that sparks an idea. Um, so hopefully this all meshes in together is kind of what I'm doing. But this is a good break from all the serious stuff, right? So I highly recommend you guys do that. Get a fiction book like that. Um, I don't know. I get, what are, what fiction, fiction books do you guys recommend? I'm just curious. Or even any any books, really. What, let me know. I still got to get into my whiskey and philosophy uh, type stuff. Uh, and Skeletor. I still got to read my what would Skeletor do. Um type stuff um but anyway that's gonna do it for tonight uh check out both uh jurassic park the movie and the novel i suggest read the book then watch the movie and get back to me and tell me what you think even if you've seen it or read it before just to dive back into that world is kind of fun uh this is when movies and books were kind of done pretty well now it's all it's crap for the most part uh you get hit and miss nowadays so anyway let me know what do you guys think? What did you think of Jurassic Park, the movie and the film, or whatever? Any other novel recommendations, fiction or otherwise, 
uh, let me know and I'll uh, check them out. So anyway, I'm out of here. I'm going to go order the book. I'm going to go read As a Man Thinketh and I'm going to get a, I don't know, a drink, I think. I don't know. It's a little warm in the shed. But anyway, I'm out of here. Hopefully the skunk, which on my way in, there was a hint of skunk out there. So hopefully he's not out there and doesn't spray me because that would suck. Anyway, I'm out of here. Take care, guys.